John, why are you called the father of Kyoto? Well, because of the negotiations we took 12 years ago, where uh, at the end of the day, just it was breaking down, just like this conference, <laughs> the leaders stepped in and the three of us met in a room, we'd agreed 5%. Uh, then they said two hours before it was to close, look, it's not enough. So I had to get a Japanese delegate in, the American in and myself, and I said to the Japanese, we're not leaving this room until we get an agreement. So the Japanese said, I'll give one more percent, he said, provided it's less than America. And America said, OK, we'll go one percent more, but as long as it's less than Europe. So I'd say, well, if I have to speak for Europe, we'll go for the eight percent. So you spoke for Europe on your own. All on my own. <laughs> so I've got the eight percent, and uh, that was the first small step for mankind. <laughs> not the very first. The wheel was, the wheel was also good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you were the Deputy Prime Minister then, were you? I certainly was, yes. Right. I had the chance to negotiate. We had the Presidency of Europe, so that gave me a great opportunity ah. to be able to negotiate <laughs> right. for Europe. And what are you doing here at Copenhagen? What's your role? Well, hoping to see we see an agreement here. That's quite important. <laughs> Failure is just unacceptable, and it's the same arguments. And indeed, when I walk around here, I meet some of the old delegates from Kyoto. It's the same highs and the lows, the fears, what's going to happen. And at the end of the day, the leaders have to come in, and Gordon Brown got the agreement. The leaders came. They're going to have to fix it at the end of the day. Because you're really spending all your days now, aren't you? You're, you're on climate change, you're tweeting, you're YouTubing, <laughs> I'm you're also taking our film around schools. You're yes, obsessed, and a fantastic film as well. Oh, so in the Council of Europe, of course, the, I'm now the, there's 47 countries in it. I'm the uh, rapporteur for it. I have to report back. We did a resolution. We did your great film did as you? well. And we down? showed it with Al Gore. And I mentioned it to Al Gore oh, today. Yeah. I said, thanks for that clip. <laughs> it got in there and I worked on the wind and I've got my little badge have like you've got. I was well. going to ask you. But you are <laughs> My little clip, <laughs> David, get my badge out. I knew they'd ask me for it. <laughs> but <laughs> it was great work you did. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I don't want to imply, I don't want to be rude, but are you kind of considering this as, 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 the, as your legacy? What, you know, getting the right deal at Copenhagen? Oh, I, don't no, know how, I don't know how to say that in a polite way. <laughs> no, 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 there are too many people involved who make it. From no, the NGOs to the own. delegates. No, but I mean, it's nice to be a part of it. Yeah. And to come here now, and uh, over the years, of course, I've got to meet the kind of the Premier of China and talk to the Americans. So it's a chance to actually use that influence. I want an agreement. I yeah. want a decent agreement. One that recognizes social justice. Yeah. The people have got to get a chance to get some of this prosperity. And the rich countries are hanging back a bit. I just want to mm. keep the pressure on them. Yeah. I know where I stand. It's social justice for those who haven't got it. Right. Because yeah, I know you've been working very closely with the Chinese. You've mm. been going to all sorts of, doing all sorts of things. What's your feeling about, about China now at this stage? Well, I think China feels, as the developing countries at the moment, that the uh, rich countries are being a bit heavy on them. And I think, yeah. you know, we've got to give them a bit more and recognise that basically when we talk about emissions, it sounds well everybody's doing everything. When you get into the gigatons and realise that America, for every one person, has 20 tonnes of pollution, yeah. China's five, Europe is into ten, uh, Africa, poor old Africa's one, yeah. that puts it into proportion. And if you want to be fair, and that's what equity is about, which is be at the heart of this agreement, then put it in the proper context. I don't think some of the richer countries yet get that, I even the right. Americans. So can you tell us, I'm sorry to throw this at you, but on this, because because the UK delegation... Am I doing the UK You are. Uh, well, the UK, <laughs> the UK is going to for 40% by 2020, at max, 30%, right? Yep. At the moment, we're on 20% by 2020, yep. but hoping to get to 30, yep. which would be towards a coin flip. If you were in charge, where would you go? what would you go for? I think we've got to be over 30%. You've got to be really tough about this. We yep. polluted the world. The rich countries can really make a difference, and therefore I You'd would put 50, that 60. over... I would certainly, I, I'd, be, I'd be certainly taking up to this region, certainly over 40%. And that's even in the Sriota period, yeah. even higher when we get longer. And uh, I, I do think, yes, we've got to do that. And also a lot more money. Yeah. You've got to do something about the money. You've got to do something about the emissions. And you've got to get uh, an agreement of how that is going to be fair and how it reduces poverty. Yeah. When the Polish Prime Minister says to me some time ago, Mr. Prescott, we are very poor here. We're not as rich as America. And we can't take this kind of deal. I say, yes, but don't you forget, I don't think you've got many people living on less than $2 a day. Day. Yeah. Let's have it in proper perspective. <laughs> Remind there are billions of people waiting for us to get it right here. It is about poverty, it's about human justice, yeah. and that's why I want to be pushing here like I was at Kyoto. Well, you're doing a very, very good job. Thank you very much. And I just want to ask, how are you going to cut your personal 10% next year as part of the 1010 campaign, which I know you've signed up for? No, I've done it. I actually had the people it. looked at the. Um, oh, I did mean. I bid the boilers before even come and told us we could get some I discount. I don't, I don't want to tell you the bad news, but if you've already done it before the end of the I know we don't get it. I no, you have to do it again. You're going to have to do another 10%.
Oh, oh no, you mean, ah, oh, well, I had them in to say, look, how can I oh, make a contribution oh, see, to the 10%? Okay. We did the boilers, we did all the right. kind of insulation, we did the water as well, I have the water cut. I could have all those things, but right. I got was advised on it, and I thought if I'm going around shouting, what are you doing your bit? Right. And your 10 by 10 came <laughs> along, and I go around the schools yeah. telling them, tell your mums and dads to do that deal. And I can't resist. Have well, you, I know what's have you coming. Still got the jacks? <laughs> I've got three. You've got three jacks yeah. now? You've changed your name? Yeah. You're not two jacks anymore? Well, I'm three jacks. You're three jacks. Yeah, because I've got a. This is a scoop. This uh, is a stupid joke. It scoop. is, yeah. I've got a bike made by Rally called the Jag, so you better get uh, up to speed. Ah, it's funny. <laughs> Thank you so much, okay. three jags.